Welcome to Electron Online. One other very interesting aspect of a black hole is what we call the photon sphere. And where is the photon sphere? Well, it is actually a little bit outside the event horizon. It's actually exactly one and a half times the distance from the event horizon or from the singularity to event horizon. Well, let me start over again. I'm messing that up. Okay, ready? Welcome to my lecture online. Another very interesting aspect of a black hole is what we call the photon sphere. The photon sphere is another sphere around the inside of the black hole that encapsulates the singularity, the Schwarzschild radius, and the event horizon. Matter of fact, the distance from the singularity to the event horizon is called the Schwarzschild radius and the distance from the singularity to the photon sphere is exactly one and a half times the Schwarzschild radius. So it's one and a half times the distance from the singularity to the event horizon. So what's so special about the photon sphere? Well, it turns out that if you were to be right there, and of course it would be very difficult to stay there being that close to a black hole, you'd get pulled in in just a fraction of a second, but if you just ignore that for a moment, if somehow you had some brakes you could put on or something that could stop you from falling in a black hole, which of course we know is impossible, and you took a flashlight and you shine it along the edge of the photon sphere, what would happen is the light would simply follow the photon sphere all the way around and would actually illuminate the back of your head. Wow, interesting. And of course, that would then reflect off the back of your head and then the light would come back this way and you could actually see the back of your head by looking this way because the light would travel all around, illuminate the back of your head and then the light would bounce back, reflect and come back to you and you'd see the back of your head. Wow, that's what the photon sphere is. It's actually the place where you'd have to travel at the speed of light in order to go around the black hole like this. And that's why they call that the photon sphere and it turns out it's exactly one and a half or three half times the distance from the from the singularity to the event horizon so that's called the Schwarzschild radius and so for an example let's say that inside there's three solar masses inside your black hole so the singularity has a mass of three solar masses so then the Schwarzschild radius would be three kilometers times three or nine kilometers so it would be nine kilometers from the singularity to the event horizon and you multiply that times three halves and you get 13 and a half kilometers and that's the distance it would be from here to the photon sphere where the light would simply travel around and around and around so notice that if you're closer than that the light would simply go in and if you're farther than that the light would then go away from the black hole and that's kind of the concept but the photon sphere is where the light would simply keep on fall going around and around and around if you were able to place it just perfectly on that photon sphere. And that's why we call it the photon sphere. Because no other material, of course, can travel at the speed of light. So no other material can actually travel around the black hole at that particular location. Now, it turns out, because of that, the accretion disk, if it's an active black hole, would then be outside the photon sphere because no material in the accretion disk could go around the black hole because it could not travel at the speed of light. And that is how it is. So if it can't travel, but it gets pulled in, right? Yeah, once any material gets to the photon sphere, it would get pulled in because it wouldn't be traveling at the speed of light. It would be going too slow, and it would simply get pulled in. At the speed of light? No, it would, well, it would get close. Nothing can ever travel at the speed of light, so it would get pulled in anyway. It's an interesting, an interesting thing, a black hole. All right. It's an inactive black hole, nothing, it just sits there and does nothing? It just sits there, it does absolutely nothing. So how do you know it exists? Only if there's other objects going around it. If there's no other objects going around it, you would never even know it's there. There could oh. be a lurking one in your backyard and you wouldn't know it. So it's a <laughs> cosmic backyard, that is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if it gets close enough, it will get pulled in. Yeah. If it doesn't get 
close enough, but closer, it would just simply, because it wouldn't be sitting there, right, an object would be moving, it would simply get deflected off and then continue on and never get pulled into the black hole. Just kind of like when the satellite goes close to Jupiter, it gets pulled and it changes direction, it gets a gravitational boost. That would be quite a gravitational boost off a black hole. Then so why would it be, be there as a, as a black hole if it does nothing? Well, the black holes don't have to do anything. There's no, they're not assigned to do anything. They just sit there. <laughs> <laughs> However, not all black holes are inactive. Some black holes are quite active, and we'll see that later on in the, in the series. Can two black holes collide? Oh, yes. And we saw that not that long ago, a few years ago. Two black holes, kaboom. And we did a video on it. You don't remember? We did too many videos. <laughs> the two that, with that we saw the gravity waves? That's the video, yeah, where two black holes collided. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now you remember. Yeah. You worked on it long enough. You should remember. Yeah. Okay.